ladies and gentlemen, to Catoctin High School, home of the Cougars. And we're ready for some exciting baseball here, live as the first pitch is now underway. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Michael Barrage. I'm joined here atop the dugout at Baseball Diamond here at Catoctin High School. Coach Rick Little, how's it look, Coach? Uh, a little chilly, but for March baseball, it's not bad out here. The sun shining up in Thurmont just a little bit. Garrett Worth pitching to the DH and just hit by the pitch. So Parker Allen, leadoff batter, trots down the first base. Get things started for the Liberty Lions. Now stepping in, the first baseman, Rocco Dietz. Also a left-handed batter, facing the right-handed arm of Garrett Worth. Garrett did pitch some last oh, year. Oh, throw to first. Wild throw gets Wild passed, throw. stays in play. And Parker Allen jogs up to second. Catcher DJ Shipkin takes time out, comes out, settle down, talk with Garrett. So one thing I, I was looking at, Coach, the rule changes for this year is kind of interesting, is that uh, the coaches are allowed to be miked to the catcher in the dugout this year. That's a new rule change. Yep. Taking and advantage of electronics a little bit, technology. Hopefully speed the game up a bit. That pitch inside. One ball, no strikes to Rocco. The Liberty Lions first baseman batting second in the order. This is when your brand new season, Garrett did pitch a little bit last year. He just needs the ball, could see the ball go over the plate a few times. Yeah, gain a little confidence. Yep, and he got a college strike there. Nice pitch, low and inside. No out, runner on second. It's just started the first inning here at Catoctin High School. Worth kicks and delivers. Low and inside, there goes the runner down the third on the pass ball. So if you're Coach Frank, Frank, Franklin, this is not the start you want to have for your young ball club. And I say young, they do have some experience. Returners back does Catoctin, but a lot of new players in the lineup. Well, I think right now what you're just seeing are some nerves. Opening, season home opener here, and the young guys are playing in front of the home crowd, and there's a base hit right inside the line, all the way to the fence down left field to pick it up. The runner scored, and the runner stand up double RBI for Roscoe Dietz. Beautiful hit. Left-handed batter just served that outside pitch down the left field line. As you said, just a couple feet inside the left field foul line. Carter Shanks steps in, third baseman for the Lions. Kick and delivery, strike. Off-speed pitch hits the outside edge of the strike zone. Caught him looking. Ball outside. One on one to count to Shanks as he looks down to third base coach for the signal. No out, man on second. Liberty's put one on the board. There's a spin and the Ooh. turn. Oh, they got him. Picked him off at second base. Beautiful timing. Shortstop, Bryant Green rotated in behind their base runner. Worth with the spin and the throw. One out. If you're scoring at home, that's a 1-6. Want to put out at second base.
Ground ball to the shortstop, double hop. He gloves it, throw to first in the dirt, Ooh, and he scooped it out for the scoop. out. Beautiful play by the first baseman. Mason Farrell stayed down low, kept the ball low. Got the one hopper just in time, records the second out. Shortstop Nathan Martin steps in now for Liberty. Nathan, right-handed batter. A little one-hopper to the third baseman. He gloves it, easy throw to first, and they get the last out of the inning. But not until the Liberty Lions put one on the board, do a little bit of damage here. In the first inning, on an error, on bad throw, a pass ball. They put the runner in, and then a nice double by uh, Dietz into the left field fence. And that's the end of the inning. We'll be right back after this message from our sponsors. Well, high school sports fans, what a great winter sports season we have. Dr. John Hageman at Center of Life Chiropractic and his wife Marcia at Center of Life Pilates for their many years of helping people in need and for the wonderful ways they give back to their community through scholarship and fundraising efforts. Center of Life is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. For information or to check out their schedule, go online to centeroflife.us today. That's Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates. Make an adjustment to your life today. Day. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Catoxin High School, the Liberty Lions here for the season home opener. And uh, a little baseball coming your way here on March the 22nd. Opening day was yesterday. Several games throughout the region. Now, Liberty played Linganore yesterday and won 7-6. to six. So, uh, Linganore comes in off a big win over the Lancers, which is a good team. So... Number four, Logan Gary gets the start here for Liberty. Left-handed pitcher. Leading off for Catoctin, Bryant Green. Bryant was on the squad last year. The junior shortstop. Last year, Bryant was one of the team leaders in RBIs with 14. Bryant will bat left-handed. First pitch taken outside. Second pitch strike fouled back. One ball, one strike. Third pitch in the dirt. Moves the count to two balls, one strike. That one's high and tight. Three and one. A good leadoff batter working the pitcher deep into the count here. And he takes strike two, full count. Take same the distance. Ball four. So Bryant works himself on base with a walk. Now stepping to the plate, catcher DJ Shipton. DJ bats right handed. 
takes the first pitch high. DJ was one of the team leaders in batting average last year with a 388 on the season. Oh, and then takes that one behind him, gets Fast past ball, the catcher. There goes the runner down to second, standing up. So similar situation as Liberty had in the first inning. Without a hit, a runner on second base and no outs. DJ fouls the bunt attempt off. Moves the count to two balls, one strike. Coach Franklin signaling in the plays and batter checks his wristband. turns and takes a look at second base there, Coach. No, I think they had no to throw. call on again for the button run. Oh. Went down to third on the steal. Uncontested because the third baseman charged as the bat bunter squared to bunt. No one there to cover. Nope. Not like you see in softball where the shortstop will All run right, over and cover third. Got that bat out of the plate now. Slash batting in that mountain ball style for the Katakan Cougars. Now he steps out of the box. Yep, you'll see no out, runner on third. You'll see the Katakan batters do that quite a bit with two strikes. Throw to third. And called a balk. They called the balk. The runner will score. So that was a very productive walk, wasn't it? Okay, we're going to have a little conversation here because the home plate umpire called a balk because the pitcher, yeah, the Liberty Lions are saying the pitcher stepped off the rubber first, therefore he did not have to throw to third. The base umpire did not call a balk. Okay. So they get together. Compare notes. So right now the run's on the board, but depending on the outcome, they could pull that one off. You'll have to see what the call send is. Send Bryant back. I'm bringing him back. No, they're bringing the coach out to talk to him. Both coaches. So they're going to put the runner back on third, coach. And I... Apologize, I cannot give my opinion because I was not looking at the pitcher. I was looking at my notes when he made his move. No, there's no man. Go back, he said. All right. So he is sending him out now. So there's no out, a runner on third. So the bulk is reversed. Good work by the umpires. Get that right. That's the most important thing. So now Green is on third. Takes a nice lead. Nice cut by Shifton. Stays King. alive. Must have fouled it off, and the catcher got some got dirt, nicked. Yeah. dirt in his eyes. I'm got her surmised by his action. Oh, oh, pass ball. Here comes the runner home. He slides in safe. So 
So that reverse balk, yeah, and didn't matter. That pitch, for some reason, only about 50 feet in the air, hit the ground, bounced up over the Liberty catcher's head. Green easily slides home for the tying runs. Moves the count to full for DJ. Nice poke out to center field. The center fielder has to rush in, and he makes the catch right in shallow center. And fighting off the sun, you could see it reflecting off of his uh, glasses out there. Nice play by center fielder Luke Berger. Jake Bell steps in, second baseman. Jake had a 365 batting average last year as a 10th grader on the squad. A lot of control issues here early on. Just as Garrett Worth had, so does Logan Gary. Catcher calls time. Jack Andrews comes out. Yeah, have a little he, conference. He got hurt again. Got Catcher smacked did. with the ball. Yep. Yeah. Shaking it off. So I got some nerves on both sides of the dugout. Yeah, and you know what? This cold is 40 degrees, yeah. but that's rather chilly. Yeah. You know, and uh, sometimes that ball's hard to grip. You need to keep your hands warm, try to keep, and I think the home plate umpire is worse for wear on that one. Yeah, he's a little, he's a little nicked over there himself. Yeah, I mean, that's why they call it the boys of summer, because this is, <laughs> baseball's a game meant to be played in the warm. All right. So I think everybody's put themselves back together. 2-0 oh, the count with one out here in the bottom of the first. Tied up at one apiece. Nice pitch. Outside corner, called strike. Two balls, one strike. Ground ball up the middle, second baseman, Rollin Pally, the two first baseman, Rocco, De Rocco Dietz, out number two. And that brings Garrett Worth to the plate, pitcher batting fourth today. Garrett, one of the team leaders last year with batting average of 386, 17 RBIs. Takes a healthy cut at the first pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, no strikes. Second pitch. Called ball. Liberty wanted it. Empire said just a bit low. That too is low. Two balls, one strike. Fouled off. Back towards your car, Michael. No, no, I parked way far away. <laughs> hey, when I got here, I'll tell you a funny story. The the. The Liberty bus was parked right at the gate. And I, I got, I drove up, rolled down the window, said, you might want to move. Yeah, he's and all the I way in the back here. I showed him a picture here. from my car last year. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't listen every day, yeah. Michael had an accident last year. He thought he parked far enough away behind the greenhouse yep. up here at Catoctin High School. And that was far enough away, but perfect distance for that foul It ball. was perfect distance for a safe light commercial. Yeah. 
Oh, Garrett well gets a hit. hold of one right center. Oh, it's the over center the head of the center, center fielder to the fence. It's a stand-up double for Garrett. Nice bat. Said one of the leading hitters last year. Average and power and RBIs. And Garrett leads off this new season with a double. And then we have a courtesy runner. Number six. Number six. Number six is Lane Moore. Courtesy run for Garrett Worth at second base with two outs. And that brings the only sophomore on the roster, Mason Farrell. To the plate, Mason's a right-handed batter. First pitch swinging, foul ball, foul territory. Yeah. First base. First baseman and dropped it. Back. Here comes the run home. Ooh. He wasn't paying attention. Throw was too late, and it got by him. There goes the runner down to second. The throw to second is through the glove and into oh. center field. The runner comes around the third. He'll go home easily. There he goes. Here comes the throw home, awesome. and he's in standing up. <laughs> so. Wow. Actually, and I'm not to score you at home. But yeah, let's and, hear that one. And I agree. Number one, was the ball fair? Because I, from this angle, it looked like that ball was just outside the line when it hit the glove. And it did fall off of his glove in the mm -hmm. fair territory. Yes. That's not how that play is called. Oh. It's right where it was touched. Anyway, the umpire called it fair. So we're going to give an error to the first baseman Got it. to get him on first base. Then it's an error on the first baseman to get Mason to second base. Then it's a two-base error on the catcher to get Mason home. <laughs> Did you get that at home? I got it. E1, E1, E2. And three runs now on the plate, on the scoreboard for the Cougars. All with two outs. And I might add one hit. <laughs> right. One ball, two strikes. To center fielder. Ethan Georgeoff. Swing and a miss, strike three. So we have strikeout for the third out, but not before the Catoctin Cougars answer with three runs in the bottom of the first to take a three to one lead into the second. So Ethan, a new name in the starting lineup for the Catoctin Cougars, center fielder. Let's see here, looking at Liberty. Shortstop, Nathan Martin leads off. Then second, here in the second inning is gonna be center fielder, Luke Berger, followed by right fielder, Michael Martin. One, two, three here in the top of the second. And we'll take a break and be right back. Our local American Legion Post 168 in Thurmont is amazing. Not only do they support local high school sports on the radio, but they have great food, great fun, and they constantly serve our community in so many ways. Check out their Facebook page, American Legion Post 168, to find out about their exciting events. And be sure to say thank you for supporting our local community. And don't you forget to say thank you every time you see them for their selfless sacrifice in military service to our country. Thanks, American Legion Post 168. We salute you. 
Don't worry. If you can't make it to the game or miss the broadcast, all of our high school sports games are archived and available online at WTHURadio.com in our audio vault. And we're back here at Thermont, Maryland, Catoctin High School, starting off the top of the second. First pitch from Garrett Worth is a swing and a miss. Nathan Martin, shortstop for the Liberty Lions. Batting right-handed against the right-handed Garrett Worth. That pitch curves outside into the dirt. Ball one. One ball, one strike. That sun keeps popping in and out, and the good thing is the wind has really cut down. The pitch just a bit outside. No, actually called strike. Outside corner, one ball, two strikes. The count. And curveball, swing and a miss, strike three. He just joined us. The Cougars jumped out to a three to one lead here in the bottom of the first on a basically a, a walk, a double, and a couple of errors to put three runs across the plate. Yep. This is a really tough pop up just over first base, just inside the line. Misplayed, and then a couple errant throws by the Liberty Lions. Luke Berger, center fielder, steps in now for the Lions. First pitch is a swing and a miss, strike one. Second pitch, foul tip. Garrett gets ahead, no balls, two strikes. down out over the Liberty dugout. Garrett working much better, much more consistently, getting ahead in the count. Again, no balls, two strikes. And another strikeout, swing and a miss, three quick strikes. Well, that'll get your confidence up fast, and two strikeouts in a row there on the with a two-run lead and the yeah, top and he's of the really second. mixing it up. Some fastballs, some curveballs. Good work by Garrett here in the second inning. And unlike last year, where they had a 93-mile-an-hour fastball thrower, McManus, this year they're going to be they're going to be putting some pitchers out on the mound that have to you know finesse you. Yeah, more like a Peyton Castillo last year, who mm -hmm. was a location and change of speed pitcher. Not a power pitcher. So Garrett, first pitch high and tight. Base hit in the left field. Rowland Polly knock, pulls that one to left. Nice base hit. And catcher Jack Andrews steps in. Outfield playing medium straight away. Right fielder shifted a little bit towards the first base line now, shadowing the line. First pitch inside, ball one. Oh boy, he's really tight to the line over yeah. there in right field now. Yeah, there's a giant hole between center field and right field. And I'm sure if I'm a batter, I'm standing up there, I'm looking 
There goes the runner down the throw. And he's safe, slides in under the tag. Yep. Just good throw, just a little on the third base side. So Brian couldn't slip it around there quickly. The dive from base runner Ryland Pally safely into second. And two balls, no strikes now the count to Jack Andrews. Pop up to left field. And there's the runner around. And he scores on the sacrifice fly. It's three oh, out. three out. Aaron Bald pulls that one in. F7 scoring in. at home. Caught me looking. We'll be right back. and respects Dr. John Hageman at Center of Life Chiropractic and his wife Marcia at Center of Life Pilates for their many years of helping people in need and for the wonderful ways they give back to their community through scholarship and fundraising efforts. Center of Life is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. For information or to check out their schedule, go online to centeroflife.us today. That's Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates. Make an adjustment to your life today. Back here live, the bottom of the second inning, three to one, Cougars lead it as they come to the plate. In order, we've got Koenig, Castro, and Grable batting. And uh, I want to thank our sponsors for making this game possible. That's American Legion Post 168, Center of Life Chiropractic, Frederick Town Yamaha and Thurmont Country Kitchen. Something wrong with the uh, uh, line up there? Who's did, at the plate? Did we miss? I think I thought Jordoff made the last out. George's <laughs> did, yeah, Jordoff. Well, then we're out of order because Castillo's batting. So we missed one. All right. Well, that's why we have erasers. Yep, we have third baseman Keaton Castello. Two balls, two strikes the count. High and outside, ball three. Count runs to full. Softball game going on down over the hill. Liberty at Kentucky. Season home opener for the ladies as well. Struck him out. So Keaton goes down on strikes. First out of the inning. Braden Grable steps in. Right fielder. for the Cougars. And now Liberty just came out and they're comparing notes as we were. <laughs> 
So you think we have an out of order bat? So that me yeah. So it could be two outs here. Well, I've got it long. right here. Oh, we have the order. Number 12 is coming up now. I just think. Now Coach Franklin trots over to see what. I don't know that Brady batted. Yeah, he didn't. I, I said it was Koenig. I said Koenig, Castillo, and Grable. And, and and Koenig had not batted. Georges was the last. Georgeoff was the last I, out. That's why I'm saying either we missed something or. And now Liberty's asking the same question. And uh, uh, Koenig is the DH. Yep. I did not have him batting anywhere. So now and field. the Liberty coach is saying. So, so what is it? What's the ruling on that? Is that an out? Yep. Brady's got to be called out by being out of order. Okay. Keaton's out with his at bat. So as the umpire and coaches work through it. So we're. So I don't like know we're, in the book. Like we're good to go. I don't know what we record his at bat at, yeah. but it's clearly an out. Well, I don't see one out on the scoreboard. Well, that's it didn't get communicated upstairs, communicated to him. But I feel safe in saying when there's one more out recorded in this half inning, they're they're going to change fields. First two pitches are called balls to Braden Grable. Swing and a miss. Ooh. Oh, I'm not sure how he got his glove on that I one. I have no idea. I think it was an act of uh, self-protection uh, to sheer survival. Because that was a line drive right back to the pitcher. And he's looking at his glove like, thank you. My friend. <laughs> well, actually, that was Koenig. That was Koenig? So, yeah. So we reversed the order there. Yeah. Castillo's going to move in. Yeah, did we get a wrong? Uh, well, we we did it with the way we saw it on the lineup card. So I thought we did. So I'll change it on my short sheet. So for those viewers at home, if you didn't see it, that was a hard hit ground ball up the middle, and it looked to me as though the Liberty pitcher, Logan Gary, got that ball in his glove between his legs and then tossed to first base to record the 1 3 out. Now, this is Grable stepping in, number 12. Two balls, one strike now. The count to Braden. Swing and a miss. So now two balls, two strikes on the high fastball. So with two strokes, two strikes, they do their little little poke out to the second baseman. Rylan Pally picks it up, throws to first baseman Rocco Dietz for the third out. So they go down one, two, three in order, and we move. Top of the third inning here, Catoctin High School with the Cougars leading three to one. E-bikes are the latest trend in urban and suburban transportation. Pedal or throttle, exercise or relax. E-bikes are everywhere now in our area. Fredericktown Yamaha Cycle Company is Frederick County's largest supplier of pedal-assisted e-bikes. 
Fredericktown Yamaha is a supplier of Yamaha, Giant, and intense electric bikes. From open road to crosstown commutes, mountain bikes, and more, Fredericktown Yamaha specializes in two wheels and a motor. Since 1975, located just off Urbana Pike in Frederick. Check out our website at fredericktownyamaha.com. Fredericktown Yamaha, where the fun begins. Live at Catoctin High School. Having a lot of fun here. Moving into the top of the third inning. Cougars lead it. Three to one and basically on one base hit. Yep. Double by Garrett Worth. Got things started. Should have say got the action started in the bottom of the first. So by my record, each team has recorded one hit, a double. So here to start off the top of the third is left fielder Aaron Bold steps in for the Liberty Lions. Garrett Worth still on the mound, working into his third inning. First pitch taken low. A little off-speed pitch there, change up. Dropped off at the, just above the shoe tops. Off the fist, nice pitch. Two hopper to first baseman Mason Farrell, gloves it, tags the ball, the base, three unassisted. Works us around to top of the order. Parker Allen, designated hitter. Left handed batter was hit by a pitch, leading off the ball game. That one goes behind him. <laughs> I guess uh, worth having a little trouble with uh, left-handed batters, huh? That's a good point. Hit one, and the other one had a double in the first inning. Bends that one over. That's a beauty. One ball, one strike. The count. Tries to bend another one in. He does. Called strike two. Nice curveball. And again, this time Parker fights it off. Stays alive. One ball, two strikes. to keep that right fielder shaded towards the line, don't they? And he's looking right into the sun, so anything coming that way is going to be tough to handle because that sun is fierce coming up over the mountains in the yep. right field. And it's interesting because the other batter was a right-handed batter expecting a late swing. This is a left-handed batter. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying that because he's throwing off-speed stuff, and if he pulls that down the line, that well, right fielder's... Well, he needs to be over there then if he does that. Yes, but yes. Yeah, and he's fighting off the sun already. Foul ball. Parker stays alive. Full count. It's a slight breeze blowing out towards right center. Nice inside change up, gets him swinging. Struck him out. Yep. Two outs here in the top of the third. Of course, high school ball, we play seven innings here. 
Rocco steps in. Rocco had the double in the first inning. RBI. First pitch, he checks his swing, ball inside. Second pitch drops low again, inside. Two balls, no strikes. Nice pitch. Nice fastball down his knees. Called strike one. One, two balls, one strike. Takes that and inside. Three balls, one strike. as the Liberty bench comes alive to try to distract pitcher Worth. Strike two. Didn't work. No, nope. full count. Fastball up high and it sneaks under Mason's glove at first base, gets by the right fielder. Rocco into second, slotting. So we'll give him a one base hit. And moves the second on the air of the right fielder. Brings to the plate Carter Shanks. In Carter's first plate appearance, he grounded out shortstop to first. So with two outs, Runner on second base for the Liberty Lions. Takes the first pitch outside. Worth coming at him with that curveball again. Can't break it over. Nice pitch, low and outside corner. One ball, one strike. This one inside corner. Called strike two. One ball, two strikes to count. Two outs. Worth showing good command of the strike zone right now here in the top of the third. And we got a ball called. I'm not exactly sure. I wish he would explain. Yeah, even Worth is kind of trying to figure that one out. And the umpire saying he stopped twice with his lead foot which is a change of motion. So that moves the runner down the third with two out. Strike and out. called strike three yeah. on the outside corner. That's how you get out of that jam, coach. Yeah, big pitch. It was. So the Cougars showing some patience, coming to the plate now here in the bottom of the third inning, and we'll be right back. Thermont Country Kitchen, conveniently located on Water Street in downtown Thermont. It's just like home, only they do the dishes. Ha! Family owned and operated since 1984, Thermont Country Kitchen has something for everyone. Handicap accessible for your choice for small gatherings or parties, and we cater too. Thermont Country Kitchen's owners, Sherry and Rob, recently received the You Make Thermont Proud Award and 
Hey, speaking of awards, their roasted chicken is the best in Maryland, hands down. Their Mount Country Kitchen's menu is unbelievable with something for everyone. Check them out today. Their Mount Country Kitchen is a proud sponsor of high school sports on the radio. are at the plate here in the bottom of third leading three to one and for the Cougars Bryant Green leadoff batter will lead off the third inning and drew a walk and scored the first run of the game in the first inning obviously so first pitch high and tight ball one Second pitch fouled off left field into the trees. We got a hold of that one. Junior's shortstop looking to have another big year here for the Cougars. Takes a low ball two. Called strike two, outside corner, two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Nice productive bat, takes it full. Easy ground to the second baseman. Scooped up by Rowland Polly to first baseman Rocco Dietz. Out number one, 4 3. And catcher DJ Shipton steps in. Shipton flew out to center field in his last at bat. Ground ball, the shortstop, and way offline. <laughs> Somehow the catcher, right in the right spot, the yeah, ball bounced him in the off shins. his shin guard, <laughs> right back to the first baseman. Good cover, right? Oh, so we're going to give E6 on the throw. DJ on first base. Jake Bell steps in. Jake out on his first at bat, 4-3. First pitch called strike. Little looping curveball, breaking left to right from lefty Logan Gary of Liberty. The left-handed pitcher staring right at the runner on first, kicks and delivers. Ooh, there and goes. that ball hits Jake in the leg. So he'll trot down to first, and DJ will jog over to second. So we got runners on first and second on an error and a hit pitch. And the dangerous Garrett Worth coming to the plate with one out. And the single hit in this game for the Cougars. Deep fly ball to right side. Stand up field. double. Mm -hmm. Oof, base hit into the gap. That one's going all the way to the fence. The run around's third. And he scores. Here he comes. They're waving him home. There's the throw. And it's not in time. A two RBI double from Mr. Worth. That ball was screaming on the line, left center field, 
couple hops all the way to the fence. And as it rested against the fence, runners DJ Shipton and Jake Bell crossed the plate. So the Cougars tack two up on the board with one out to take a five to one lead here. And Garrett off to a great start here in the season. Two for two, two doubles, three RBIs. Mason Farrell steps in. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. Mason's first at bat was that pop up to first base that got the runners moving. Pickoff play at second. He's whoa. That was close. They had him if if yeah. the shortstop was closer to the bag. I think when the he throw was a little off too. Yeah, he had to go get the ball and come try to come back to the base. Yeah, they had to pick on. In the dirt. Two. One ball, one strike. The count to Mason. One out. Runner on second. Bottom of the third. Cougars lead at 5 1. Farrell with a really wide stance. That front, front foot's at the edge of the batter's box and the back foot's at the back edge. He's really got a wide stance for a small guy. And he's not guy. a really tall guy either. He, he does have a, just a little bit of weight shift when he loads. Yeah, it's a little bit of a closed stance too. He's got that front foot in towards the plate. Three balls. One strike to count. Speaking of the outfield alignment, look at where the left fielder, I mean right fielder is now. For Liberty. For Liberty, he's practic he's in Such right a contrast center. to the Cougars right fielder. Yeah, that, right. that right field line is wide open. Got him looking. Moves the count to full. And high Walking. ball four. So a good patient at bat for Farrell. Takes it all the way the distance and gets the base on balls. Left-handed Ethan Georgeoff steps in. Center fielder struck out his first at bat. Batting left-handed. They still haven't shifted. That right fielder playing shadowing over to the center. The line is wide open. And now we have a timeout. Liberty coach out to the mound, brings the infield in. You got runners on first and second here and a batter at the plate. Cougars with an opportunity here to tack a few more on board. They just came up with two runs. One came off an error on a throw to first. And the other on a hit pitch, and both of them came across the plate on a two-bagger. His second of the game by Worth. Batting a 1,000 today. For the season. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Cold day here at Catoctin High School. You'll hear us sniffing here on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. It's because the, you've got a, the sun is going down, and so is the temperature. We started out, we were probably right around, what, 50? Yes. It, 50 felt like 45, and... <laughs> Coach Franklin coaching him up out there. He says, what does back mean? Back, back, back. <laughs> yeah, he's Lane Moore is a uh, courtesy runner, and he almost got himself picked off earlier. Showing bunt. 
I think his goal here is getting the infield moving, which is happening, and Short's trying to run all the way over and cover third in case the Cougars decide to steal behind that bunt. One on one the count. Fouled away. Ethan just a bit out in front of that one. This is where Coach Franklin has coached him up over the years and years. Just put this thing in play. Don't have to be hard. Just put it in play. Now the pitcher wants another ball as he throws this ball into the Cougars dugout. The umpire. And he does, as he does that, the first baseman retrieves sunglasses. As the sun is starting to set over our shoulder over the third base dugout, shining directly into the eyes of first, second, and right field. That one's in the dirt. Yeah, the runners. Oh. The runner started. <laughs> Coach Franklin. Coach Franklin <laughs> growing some gray hair yeah. on this at bat alone. <laughs> he wanted the runner to steal on the And pass then ball. the runner saw it bounce back and changed his mind. I think he might have been thrown out, don't you? Yeah. It was a good throw to yeah. the third. A nice friendly bounce back to the catcher. So with two balls, two strikes. Ethan well hit left field. Oh, just foul ball. pulled foul. Right at the 327 marker. Nice solid poke down the left field line. Just Indeed. faded foul. And with two strikes, he stays alive. One more pitch. In the dirt. Runs the count to full. Ethan with a great at bat here. High and inside. It gets past him. Both runners advance, but they were going anyway. The ball Some went back ball to the screen to there. Ethan. But he moves up. Catcher coming out now to talk to pitcher Logan Gary. So let me set the stage for you here. One out, base is loaded. Cougars up five to one here in the bottom of the third. Now the coach. Coming out to the pitcher's mound to talk to. And he's taking the ball. Gary, he's going to bring him out. That'll mean break time for us as we bring a new pitcher in to warm him up. We'll be right back. You have a list of things. None of those things say wander around a warehouse looking for somebody to help you or walk out not knowing if you got exactly what you need. Nope, you have a list of things and Ace has them from the brands you trust. We also have people who ask the right questions to make sure you get everything you need because at Ace, we have our own list and great service is at the top. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Head over to Cousins Ace Hardware today. Located on North Church Street in Thurmont, Cousins Ace Hardware is a proud sponsor of high school athletics on the radio. 
Where do you get your real-time information? News, weather, traffic, school delays, and cancellations. At Cool 1450 AM, one of our most important resources is frederickscanner.com. Live traffic cams, weather cams, city and county resources, police, fire and rescue. Anyone living, working, or traveling in and around Frederick should bookmark frederickscanner.com on their PC or go to their Facebook page and download the mobile app today. frederickscanner.com. Um, a live information window to Frederick County. All right. Welcome back. We're here back live where we're warming up a pitcher. Liberty has got a brought in a new pitcher here in the bottom of the third inning with bases loaded and one out. Number 18, stepping in for Liberty. It's Miller on the mound. Ball one. Fouled off. Out of terror, out of play, out over the Liberty dugout. Now the catcher trots out. Let's tell the pitcher Miller, the new pitcher Miller. Miller came in to replace Gary. Facing Keaton Castello at the plate. One and two the count. Grounder to the third baseman. He gloves it, throw to home. They get the force. Ground out by Castillo. Fielder's choice, throw home. That'll bring Koenig to the plate. Called strike. Two out, bases loaded. Cougars lead it five to one here on the bottom of the third. Coning ground out to back to the pitcher. A wild line drive to the pitcher that he caught between his legs. Swing and a miss. So Miller way out in front now with an 0-2 count. So Koenig with bases loaded and two outs here. And what a change of pace here, Chase Miller. Good velocity, really attacking these Catoctin batters. Nice, high and away. Koenig looks it off, moves the count to one and two. Runners all taking a nice lead. With two out, run on anything. Ooh, right at the knees 
And the umpire evens Sh the count at two apiece. Yeah, that's one of those pitches when you're the pitcher, you want that one, and when you're the batter, you're saying, whoo, thank you. <laughs> Brady Koenig steps in as coach telling him to attack it. Playing him deep in left field. Grounder right over the legs, uh, bobbled by the second baseman, not in time. Here's the throw home, and the run scores. So two runs in on that one, as the first baseman bobbled the throw. So E4 puts Brady on base. Garrett, Garrett's runner scores. Mason Farrell scores. And the Cougars lead 7-1 on a two-out rally. Just some mountain ball being played here in the shadow of the Catoctin Mountains. Early spring season opener, home opener of Catoctin High School against the Liberty Lions. 12, Grable at the plate now. Two out, runner on first. And third. Thank you. Low and away, ball one. In the dirt, pass ball, here comes the runner home, and he slides in safe. Castillo with those long, gliding strides from third. up to an eight to one Catoctin lead. Two out, two and oh the count to Grable. Bottom of the order for the Cougars as he fouls one into the screen. Infield moves in, medium depth, straight away. second baseman got a good good lead and I believe did he call him on the balk I think it batter called time and just stepped out okay runner stays at second two and one the count now nice looking pitch just off the strike zone that'll take the count to three and one with two out Grable in the driver's seat now against Miller. And Low and away, and he walked him. Braden, good at bat, fouled a couple off, earned himself a walk. Very impressed with the Cougars here, making, making a lot of something out of nothing. Right. Just playing, just really patient, disciplined ball. Yep, just staying alive, taking advantage of every little miscue that Liberty makes defensively. Strike right across the plate, fastball from Miller. Where we started, Bryant back. Green, his second at bat here in the bottom of the third. Back around, we batted the order here. The Cougars have tacked on five runs here in the third. To take an eight to one lead.
slider inside, high and inside, has the batter backing out. As Bryant, he really is a patient at bat, always. He's not afraid to go deep into the count. Inside. Two and one the count now. The green. Foul tipped into the glove of the catcher. That'll even the count at two apiece. Welcome back to second. Miller kicks and delivers. Ooh. Nice pitch. Caught him looking and struck him out to end the inning. So Green goes down looking, but not until the Cougars put one, two, three, four, five runs across the plate with one hit. And I see three errors to walk out of that inning and take an eight to one lead into the dugout here. As we move to the top of the fourth inning, we'll be right back. Locally owned and operated for over 50 years. Winner nine years in a row for the best of the best in Frederick County. Let our professionally trained staff of certified landscapers transform your yard from a dream to reality. Hawkins Landscaping specializes in elegant and inviting outdoor environments. If you're looking to create, upgrade, or revitalize your outdoor space, Call Hawkins Landscaping today at 301-898-3615. That's 301-898-3615. Hawkins Landscaping. When you deserve the best, get the best. And we're back here. Stockton High School, ready to start the top of the fourth inning. The Cougars with a commanding eight to one lead as they pick up three runs in the bottom of the first and five runs in the bottom of the third after the Liberty Lions jumped off to a one to nothing lead in the top of the first. Garrett Worth back on the mound working into his fourth inning. Shortstop. Nathan Martin steps in for the Lions. Shortstop. First to bat out, second base to first base. First pitch called strike one. Second pitch fouled back, strike two. Yeah, since that first inning, Garrett Worth has worked very well. Commanded the strike zone. Deep shot to left field and Great play. Looks like Patrick Moreland, number 23, has moved into left field. Nice play out there in left field.
First pitch to Luke Berger. Called strike. Second pitch also called strike. Center fielder Berger struck out his first at bat in the second inning. Just outside with the curveball. One ball, two strikes. Delivery, and it, this one also breaks low and outside. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball, fouled off. Luke stays alive. Count holds it two and two. talked about them using an electronic means of calling the pitch. Doesn't look like that's happening. DJ checks the dugout to get the pitch count. Oh, high fastball stays high and in and hits Luke. So Luke jogs down the first base. One out, runner on first, Michael Martin steps in. The right fielder struck out his initial at bat of the game. Throw to first. Berger back in under the throw. Baseball foul tip. No ball, one strike, the count. Checks the runner at first. Delivery. Inside. Ball one. Slow curveball. Breaks over. One ball, two strikes, the count. One hopper to the shortstop. Wow. Steps on second. Taylor made double play ball. You couldn't have asked for a better hit ball than that, that thing. Yep. One hop to the shortstop. And Bryant was played that. Perfectly touched second base, throw to first for the double play. Good positioning, good execution, good defense. And they get the double play, the first one of the game for either team. As we'll step aside here, take a quick break, and be right back as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning with the Cougars coming to the plate here at Catoctin High School. We'll be right back. <laughs> What's the People's Restaurant? It's the diner, and you won't find a better one than the Mountain View Diner. It's the ultimate comfort food. From delicious appetizers to sandwiches to succulent entrees, the Mountain View Diner can satisfy any taste. If it's mouthwater and Greek fare you're after, the Mountain View Diner will not disappoint. And don't forget the famous cheesecake. Mountain View Diner on West Patrick Street in Frederick and in Charlestown, West Virginia, across from the casino. A winner three years in a row for a Best of Frederick Award. The people who love great food eat at the People's Restaurant. The Mountain View Diner. Taking the 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Catoctin High School in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Cougars come to the plate with an 8-1 to one lead. And basically, um, I'm looking at the sheet here, and I'm, I'm seeing, let me see, one, I've got one, two, is, um, is that right? Only two hits? Which team? The Cougars. The Cougars have two hits. Two hits in the whole game and has produced eight runs. Yeah. A few walks, a few miscues, a few hit by a batter, hit by a pitcher. That's some real mountain ball right there. And we move here to the bottom of the fourth. DJ steps in. DJ started bat, flat out to center first inning, third inning, on on an E6 and scored a run. One ball, one strike now to count. Chase Miller gets a ball, sets in there, and he's ready to face Jake Bell. Jake out 4-3 in the first inning and hit by pitch with a run score in the third. Big swing and a miss on the changeup. DJ had a nice lead there on that first pitch. See if Coach Franklin puts him in motion. Seven run lead here. Oh, there goes the runner. A running lead. Was that an attempt to pitch out on that one, or was that just a uh, wild pitch? I think it was just a bad pitch. Well, the catcher had but to go upstairs. I'm, I'm not sure if he didn't catch out of the corner of his eye. DJ was running yeah. before that pitch was even delivered. Yeah. So DJ took off, and the pitcher threw it way high up in the air. The catcher able to get up there on the step ladder and bring it in, but stand-up steal for DJ, who's now standing on second base. Now, you talked about the use of electronics to call the pitch in. I noticed DJ for Catoctin checks to the dugout every pitch. Yet the catcher, Jack Andrews, for Liberty has an earplug in. Mm -hmm. So the, the devices are only allowed to be used between the coach and the, the catcher. catcher. And the coach must be in the dugout region. He cannot leave the dugout. Yeah, he's sitting right there on that bucket in the middle. Got to be right there in the dugout, because if he leaves the dugout and goes away from the dugout area, it's an automatic out and a disqualification for the for the coach. An ejection of the coach. Right. I was the count runs to two balls, two strikes now to Jake. DJ on second base. In the dirt, pass ball. So a very productive trip for DJ as he went on on a hit pitch. He's managed to go all the way around the third into scoring position now. And Liberty brings infield in, try to cut down the run into plate. Ground ball back to the third baseman. Checks the runner, throws to first. 5-3, out at first.
Garrett Worth steps in with a runner on third base. First is open. You wonder if you put him on. Garrett's yeah. two for two, two doubles, a bunch of ribbies here in game one of this 2024 season. Foul tip. Yeah, check swing foul tip off the bat. The catcher walks out mm -hmm. to the mound now. He's going to talk to Miller. Takes his Coach Franklin's mask. coming down to ask him. What's his point? I think, I think he th thinks that Coach Franklin's hit by pitch, not yeah. a foul ball. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to check exactly with right. the base umpire. Coach Franklin just looked at one of the other uh, coaches in the yeah. talking dugout and said it hit him. Ticked off his hands versus the bat. Now, are, is that what they're discussing there? Yeah. Between? That's going to be a tough one for the base umpire yeah. to see. So they're. Uh, I think we're staying here. I think we're going to stay right where we are. And Garrett probably says, that's all right. I, I like hitting. Having a big day at the plate. One out, runner on third. Bottom of the fourth, Cougars lead at eight to one. Check swing called strike. Over the outside corner on that curveball. Well, I think if I'm Chase, I'm not throwing any fastballs to Garrett. <laughs> Gets him up high, swing and a miss. Mason Farrell steps to the plate. First baseman scored two runs today. First at bat was a E3, second was a base on balls. I'm sure Mason would like to put one in play here and get DJ in for the ninth run. Center fielder, right fielder playing medium depth straight away. Left fielder back deep straight away. Second pitch also high. Two balls, no strikes. Ooh, third pitch stays in tight. Shipton getting in Miller's head on every pitch as he takes a leap towards home plate at the delivery. It's got to be something that here's the dirt moving. Yeah, and, and he's looking. with that, they just call ball four. So the fourth pitch, intentional walk. Brings up Ethan Georgeoff. Left-handed Ethan steps in his third at bat of the game. Struck out in the first, walked in the third. Two outs, runners on the corners. Bottom of the fourth. Ooh. Oh, the second baseman has trouble. He gets him. Yep. Gets him caught in between his just legs. In time. But he pulls the ball out, throws it the second for the force to end the inning. The Cougars with an eight to one lead here in the bottom of the fourth. I want to thank our sponsors for making this game possible. It's American Legion Post 168, Center of Life Chiropractic, Thermont Country Kitchen, and Fredericktown Yamaha. We'll be right back. Don't touch that.
that dial. We'll be right back after this important message. Today's traffic is brought to you by local REMAX Results realtor Kim Clever, licensed in both Maryland and Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Kim Clever, and let's face it, the current real estate market conditions are complicated. I have over 13 years of successfully helping people achieve their real estate dreams. Check out my website at kimclever.com and experience real estate the clever way. Once again, that's kimclever.com. This update is brought to you by 8ignoremyscore.com. Well, if you're heading through Frederick at this point, in the southbound side of Route 15 at Modern Avenue, there is a collision. It has been pushed off to the right-hand shoulder. There's bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic very heavy from Route 26, and that continues all the way toward Patrick Street. 270, that's crawling very heavy spots out of Clarksburg, going northbound. That's a very long delay all the way toward Frederick, around toward Route 85. Then you're crawling again after that on Route 15, going northbound through Frederick off of I-70. That takes you toward the accident of Clinton Park that's going on at Modder Avenue, but your northbound lanes are open getting past this situation. This update is sponsored by 8ignoremyscore.com. Do you need a car? Auto Credit Express can help. All right, we are back here at the top of the fifth inning. The Cougars in the field leading 8-1. to one. And the Liberty Lions coming to bat. Lead off batter. For the Lions, number three. Yep. Rylan Pale stepping in for the Lions. And pitching change for the Cougars. Gavin Watkins now on the mound. Relieving Garrett Worth. Garrett with a solid first outing here of the 2024 spring season. Gavin, a three-sport athlete coming off football, just finished basketball, and now he's out there on the pitcher's mound for the Cougars playing some baseball. Down over the hill, it looks like the Catoctin Lady Cougars are trying to mount a seventh inning comeback. They're down seven to five. The bottom of the seventh with runners on first and second. No outs. First pitch to Rylan. Rylan, swing and a miss. Which reminds me, we'll be bringing you Catoctin at Walkersville softball next Wednesday, March the 27th, right here on Cool Oldies 1450. That's our first softball game of the season. And what a good one will it be. Catoctin at Walkersville. Second pitch called strike. Gavin, this one out in the dirt by Watkins. Moves the count. One ball, two strikes. Also low and outside, two balls, two strikes. When you come in as a reliever, you always like to get that first one. Build that confidence right up. Two balls, two strikes, and fastball. Fastball got him outside looking. Outside corner, got him looking. Yes, indeed. Nice pitch. Gavin throws hard. Yes. Jack Andrews steps in, his second at bat. Catcher flew out to left field, his initial at bat. First pitch inside. The Cougars now have bases loaded with one out in the bottom of this. The seventh. Lady Cougars. Lady Cougars. Bases yes. loaded with one out in the bottom of the seventh. Good old game. Do or die here. time. Pitch by pitch. Are we losing power there? Yeah, we're, no, we're losing our connection. To oh, network. Fouled off. Two balls, one strike to count.
inside, three and one. Cougars in their gray uniforms with the blue lettering. Beautiful fastball right up the middle. Just stood there looking at it. Yeah, I think Jack was taking that, working deep into the count here, trying to get himself on base for his teammates. Full count. Full count. Misses outside. Oh, that was a nice fastball, too. So timeout called. Courtesy runner. Liberty Lions third base coach and the courtesy runner comes on. That jersey number, Michael. Can you pick that up down there on the runner on first base? Come on, Al, let's go. Come on, Looks like number nine. Number nine would be Seth Jacobs. Yes, indeed. Seth Jacobs, courtesy runner at first. And pinch hitter for the Lions now. Number 17 steps to the plate. And guess what? We don't have a 17 on our roster. Yes, we do. It's um, number 23 was changed to 17. Okay, so that's Braden Chubb. That was a change at the field that the coach notified me of. I didn't get a chance to change it on the roster there, coach. Sorry. Okay, no worries. So Braden steps in for Aaron Bold. We just saw a softball come out onto the baseball field over the right fielder. He doesn't know it, but it's like right I think behind he, him. He is calling for time. He did call timeout. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, the, the fans helped him out on that one as he tosses it over to the back to the softball field. So somebody fouled one off out there at the Lady Cougars in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, it looks like they're down to their last out with bases loaded down over the hill in softball. Called strike. Moves the count to two balls, two strikes to Chubbs. And they walked one in, so now it's seven, six softball. I hear the cheer. And There's a cheer, and so something happened. Still got him at yeah. first Ooh. base. Nice, nice play. Nice recovery by the third baseman there. He got caught, got the ball caught in the turf. He finally got it up and out and threw yep. the first on a one hopper for the out. Keaton Castillo at third base for the Cougars. Maintain composure, pick that up. What grade is he? 11th grader. Okay. So two years behind his brother. So. It, Looks like the Stockton Lady Cougars have tied up the game with two. Oh, and have won the game. Yeah, everybody's walking away, so. Eight to seven. A walk off run, home run. Bottom, not a home run. Oh. Couple base hits and walks and. Whoa, there's a well hit ball deep in the center field to the fence. The runner turns and comes home. Throw in the cutoff. So Parker Allen delivers a two out double. RBI double. Indeed. That'll move it to eight to two. Cougars on top here in the top of the fifth. And congratulations in order to the Lady Cougars. A walk off run for the season home opener win against Liberty. They move to one and zero. Oh. In the dirt. The runner holds. Catcher keep, kept that one right in front of him. That was a good play. Took it off his shoulder and kept it out over the plate. Didn't allow it to get behind him. So Rocco Dietz. Two balls, no strikes to count to Rocco. High and inside. 
Gavin adjusts that cap, toes the rubber and looks in. Throw to first, they got him. Sides retired. So the Liberty Lions put one across on a nice hit to the fence, double by Allen here. The top of the fifth, that'll bring the Cougars to the plate with an eight to two lead. The bottom of the fin fifth inning and that'll take us to a timeout. <laughs> American Legion Post 168 in Thurmont is amazing. Not only do they support local high school sports on the radio, but they have great food, great fun, and they constantly serve our community in so many ways. Check out their Facebook page, American Legion Post 168, to find out about their exciting events. And be sure to say thank you for supporting our local community. And don't you forget to say thank you every time you see them for their selfless sacrifice in military service to our country. Thanks, American Legion Post 168. We salute you. <laughs> Indeed, we do salute you for your support of Catoctin Cougar Sports here on the radio and your valuable service to our country. Uh, you know, it occurs to me that um, that we're going to be back here again on Monday. Correct. And Middletown's coming there, here. And Middletown, if you, uh, if you did like an early poll of the top, say, four or five teams, Middletown's got to be in the conversation. Got to be. Yeah, and you know they really had a good run here, last couple of years of solid seasons, and you know they just keep rolling the players in and out of the lineup. Yep, they've done a nice job over there in Middletown, so that should be a lot of fun. Temperature's supposed to warm up a little bit for everybody. Thank goodness. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> nice. It's more like football weather out here than baseball. So we have Keaton Castello starting us off here in the bottom of the fifth. Chase Miller returns to the mound for the Liberty Lions. Miller's done a good job in relief here. Yes, he has. For Gary. Big, strong kid. Right-handed. Stretch. Second pitch a little low and outside. A little high ball too. Speaking of the Walkersville softball team, they started their season off with a resounding 22 to five victory over Francis Scott Key. Home or away? They were up at Francis Scott Key. So they're over in Carroll County. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where Liberty Lions are from, Sykesville, Maryland. If you've ever had a chance to go over to Sykesville, check it out. The beautiful downtown historic area. Some of the best restaurants in Maryland over there. Nice pitch. Called strike two. Two balls, two strikes. That one was in the dirt. He moves the count to full. Miss Keaton throws his bat out there and that little timing mechanism that we've come to term as mountain ball, right? Slash, slash ball, ball. Yep. slash ball, yeah. Slash batting, I mean. Whoa, and he connected on that one. It's better get in there quick. Uh, and left fielder makes the running catch. It's a little slow start out there, but then the left fielder was able to catch up to it. Well, that ball had, that was pretty high up in the air. It was well hit, but it was up and he had a chance to run under it. Yeah, we had quite a few defensive changes. Looks like first baseman Rocco De Dietz is now in center field. Center fielder moved, Luke Berger moved to left field who just made that play. 
So the ball got away from Miller there a little bit there. Now we have Brady Koenig step in. Two balls, no strikes to count. One out. Bottom of the fifth. Cougars lead at eight to two. Ball three. Inside. So he'll be taking this one all the way. Indeed he did <laughs> for the called strike. Interesting style as he swishes that bat back and forth like he's sweeping the plate. Ooh, check swing. Ticks off his arm. Oh, hit him. Okay. So he gets hit on the arm, the hit pitch, as he graciously tosses the ball back to the pitcher as he runs down first baseline. And Braden Grable steps in for his third at bat of the evening. Out 4 3 to first at bat, walked second at bat. Miller turns and looks at first base. Holding the runner on. A bit of a change up there, huh? Yep. That one dropped into the plate. Trying to turn nice two. Play, they nice got him. play. Nice play. Third baseman Carter Shanks started that one off well. We have a five, four, three, double play. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. It's break time. Respects Dr. John Hageman at Center of Life Chiropractic and his wife Marcia at Center of Life Pilates for their many years of helping people in need and for the wonderful ways they give back to their community through scholarship and fundraising efforts. Center of Life is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. For information or to check out their schedule, go online to centeroflife.us today. That's Center of Life Chiropractic and Pilates. Make an adjustment to your life today. Sixth inning, Cougars in the field and the Lions at the plate. Cougars with a six-run lead, eight to two. Hey, before we get rolling here, I'm, I misspoke. That game is not over yet up at Francis Kotke. It's only in the top of the fifth. It's now 22 to nine, but it's, Walkersville with the lead. But, but the slaughter rules in effect. I would oh, imagine. Oh no, 22. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. At at the end of the fifth. Yeah, yeah. At the home half of fifth. Right. So the young man that started that double play in the bottom of the previous inning is leading off for the Liberty Lions. Number 12 for Liberty, batting right-handed. Third baseman Carter Shanks looking for his first hit of the evening. Fastball right over the plate, right at the knees. Looks like. Gavin's a little cold. He's shaking that hand and <laughs> trying to get the feeling back in it, that pitching hand. Oh, fly ball in the right center, and they're yeah, not going to get to it. Runner coming around the second. There's the throw, and it's not in time as he slides in safe. Yeah. 
So Carter gets things started off here yeah. for the Liberty Lions in the top of the sixth inning with a double. Nice lead off double there to get the blood flowing. Shortstop Nathan Martin steps in. Right-handed batter, 0 for 2 on the evening. Oh, first pitch calls strike, top of the zone. Second pitch low and a swing and a miss. Gavin gets ahead of Nathan here. No balls, two strikes. Checks the runner, the delivery, and a high fastball, swing and a miss. Struck him out. First out here in the bottom of the sixth. Step into the plate, Luke Berger. Struck out in the second, hit by pitch in the fourth. First pitch up high, ball one. Oh, second pitch, oh, hits hit him. him. So Luke jocks down the first base on the hit by pitch. Right fielder Michael Martin steps in. Checks the runners, winds, delivers, fastball, nice pitch. Get things started here for Gavin. One out. Top of the six runners on first and second. Ball in the dirt. Blocked by DJ. Keeps it in front of him. Holds the runners. Fastball misses outside. Two balls, one strike. Foul ball back out of play. Evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. One out with a runner in scoring position on second base. Lions at the plate. Top of the sixth. Bows that one off, stays alive. ball up and back out of play again. <clears throat> Taking Gavin deep, isn't he? Yeah, he's working him, staying alive. With two foul balls with two strikes on the count. Count remains two and two. Ground ball, third baseman, he tags the runner oh, and throws play. the first heads up play by Keaton Castillo at third base. 
double play, the second one turned by the Cougars here tonight. Step aside for a break and be right back as the Cougars come to the plate in the bottom of the sixth. <laughs> E-bikes are the latest trend in urban and suburban transportation. Pedal or throttle, exercise or relax. E-bikes are everywhere now in our area. Fredericktown Yamaha Cycle Company is Frederick County's largest supplier of pedal-assisted e-bikes. Fredericktown Yamaha is a supplier of Yamaha, Giant, and intense electric bikes. From open road to crosstown commutes, mountain bikes, and more, Fredericktown Yamaha specializes in two wheels and a motor. Since 1975, located just off Urbana Pike in Frederick. Check out our website at fredericktownyamaha.com. Fredericktown Yamaha, where the fun begins. <laughs> here live at Catoctin High School and I was thinking of that that uh, last night my wife and I went out to dinner and we we were at a traffic light in a pretty busy area in, in Columbia Maryland and there was a little headlight in the opposing traffic coming towards us in the turn lane my wife said is that a motorcycle because it was pretty cold out and I said no I actually think that's one of those e-bikes because it's really low the, the lights low to the ground and when the light turned green the guy started to turn the man was on a Segway he was riding a Segway with a helmet on in heavy traffic in the middle of Columbia. And I thought, I, I boy, that takes some guts. I didn't think a Segway was street legal. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. But it was. And I remember thinking, that's what I thought of when I heard that e-bike commercial just now for our buddies over at Fredertown Yamaha. I was like, I wonder if they sell Segways. <laughs> All right, here we go. Play is in, and the Cougars are at the plate, batting left-handed. Brian Green. Yep, we should be up top of the order. Top of this. Check that in bottom of the sixth for the Cougars. Eight to two lead. A couple of defensive changes for the Liberty Lions. We'll Left field now is Aiden Shear. High fastball. Braden Chubb in at first base for the Lions. And Andrew Nelson in at second base. <coughs> I don't know if you noticed that, but the center fielder had to run over to the right field and, and give him the sunglasses. They're, and they're, all, they're all shuffling sunglasses right. over there now. And then yeah. the second baseman did the same thing with the first baseman. So and now the first baseman went and got his own. Or got somebody's to wear. Because the sun has peaked out again before it drops over the mountain. Yeah, we can see our shadow on us. the field just behind the pitcher's mound. Ball, two strikes to count, and that one's high and outside. He goes sidearm. He went submarine on that pitch. Got away from him a, a bit. A little errant on that toss. Two balls, two strikes. Lead off batter green at the plate. Fouls it back. Count the full. Infield pop up, up over our head and out of play. Right back into the bullpen. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. 
wind is reversed out of the north now, coming right at us. Yeah, we don't need any of that. <laughs> Foul ball up over us again. Into the trees behind us. Good, because I had no idea where that ball could have hit me right in the forehead, and I would have known it. Well hit into the gap at right field. He dressed over and makes the catch. Nice play by the right fielder. Fighting the sun. Seth Jacobs makes the play. F9 if you're recording at home. He shows his teammate how he stumbled on the first step. <laughs> And he's kind of loud. They're getting a chuckle out of it. There's a ground ball to third. Oh. Nice it. play. Rotor first in time. Two up, Carter two down. Shanks playing a nice third base here for Liberty. That was a tough hop off the mm -hmm. grass. Yeah, transitioning never into the dirt area. Yeah, you got to stay on that all the way into yep. your glove. You never know when that thing's going to hit you in the face when a little little rock or something there in the field. Out 5-3. Jake Bell steps in for his fourth at bat of the night. Two outs. Two with a hit by pitch and a run scored. Oh, he drove that one in the center field, and the center fielder oh, makes the, rock, the catch. Sinking line drive. Yep. He had to come in and make that underhanded catch. So three up, three down. We quickly move to the top of the seventh. And what has is potentially the last at bat of the game. I like how you said that. You don't want to. What's old Yogi say? It's not over till it's over. Not over till it's over. Well, ask the, the uh, Liberty Lions that uh, softball team that question. Yeah. You know, and this this is the one sport where time doesn't run out on you, unless of course the sun sets behind you in the mountains. <laughs> Or you're playing Urbana for the state championship and there's no lights on the field. That's right. <laughs> that uh, reference to Catoctin last year tied for the CMC baseball championship at Frederick Community College against the Urbana Hawks. So they, they co-own yeah, the yeah, trophy. I, th I think that was a little mutual agreement <laughs> by everybody. Yes. It's one yes. of those... Uh, for show type games, bragging rights, but you don't want to wear all your pictures out as you're getting set for the <laughs> right. start the uh, the real playoff series. A good game, but yeah, really good game, really game. An, an honor to be a part of that one last year, and uh, to be a part of that season all the way up until Clear Spring came to town. So now on the mound for Catoctin. Left fielder moves in to pitch. Number 23, Patrick. Patrick coming off the basketball season. Another good basketball player for the Catoxin Cougars. Throwing in relief here. Our third Cougars pitcher of the game. Yep. And for the Liberty Lions, the second baseman, the reserve, steps in. His first at bat, number 14, Andrew Nelson. Batting right-handed. Get that orange bat ready to go. Liberty Lions with royal blue jerseys, white pants, and yellow lettering. Kind of like the Walkers of the Lions color. <laughs> a lot of similarities. The Liberty Lions, the Lions, Lions and the Lions. Royal blue and yellow gold. All right. First pitch, a little bender there. Yeah, a little curveball to start out. Yeah, now another one. Jumps out 
ahead, no balls, two strikes. I like the energy out of the bench for Catoctin, cheering Patrick on here. Well, that's well hit in the center field. Drifts over, makes a catch. A can of corn. <laughs> center fielder Ethan George off gobbles it up. Moreland smiles yep. over to the dugout. My de defense has got my back, he says. He's two outs away from the win. So now number 20 steps in for the Lions. Dominic Marzisco. Marzisco batting right-handed. Very eager to get in there. Closed stance. First pitch, nice little late break. Kind of like a slaughter type cutter pitch. That one he reached back and fired a little high. One yeah. ball, one strike. And Patrick tapped his chest in the my bad to the That's catcher. Right. It's actually a good change, even though the ball was a ball. The fastball just a change of pace a little bit. Third pitch in for a ball, two balls, one strike. Beautiful, nice. Got him looking for that one. Outside corner, evens the count. Well, it takes a deep breath, kicks and delivers. And a little check swing blooper to the second base. And Jake Bell gobbles it up, tosses the first. 4-3 out. Two outs here Moreland, in the top of the seventh. Moreland grinning again. He's sensing it. Exciting always to get in that first appearance. Yeah. Things go your way. Check swing called strike. Nice cutter. Yep. Braden Chubb, his second at bat. Check that, his first, he was, went to left field, but his first at bat, batting ninth in the order. Check swing, fouls it off, ooh, right into the utility bands. <laughs> didn't hear any glass shatter. I, I didn't either. I just, Safely I'm, to the turf. I'm cringing. <laughs> One ball, two strikes to count. Outside, evens the count. I think at this point, both teams are rooting for the out. As the temperature drops and the sun goes down behind the Catoctin Mountains. Ball outside, full count. Two out, no one on, top of the seventh. Last at bat for Liberty. Ooh. Jake Bell, one hopper, 4-3, the final out. So they ground out to second. The Cougars get the W. Eight to two is the final score here at the top of the seventh. As the gloves come in, Teams meet at home plate to exchange congratulations for the season opener here at Catoctin High School. A nice way to start it out. Yeah, put the ball in play, get hit by a pitch a few times, take advantage of any miscues that your opponents make. A couple of walks mixed you, in there. Yep, you score eight runs on two hits, and you play solid defense. You know, you record the win. So you have a good place to start with them. And you know, you still have some things to work on, but that's okay. The season young. And we got a chance to see what the pitching rotation's got, gonna look like for this team. They start out with Worth coming at you. Worth, uh, very tricky. 
Got some yep. good change of speed, some good delivery. Not not an overwhelming pitcher, but a very good control pitcher. And he yeah. moves the ball around in the strike zone well. Yeah, and, you know, with the pitch count rule, you know, you have to have at least five young men that can give you some innings. You know, sometimes maybe more, but here early in the season, you like to work them into, especially when the temperatures are a little cooler. Garrett probably could have pitched some more. But no need. You know, he did four innings. Gavin came in, pitched the fifth and sixth, and then Patrick finishes up in the seventh for the win. Yeah, Gavin comes in throwing heat and, and, and hard. Big guy, strong, comes right at you. And then you come in with a Moreland. I really was impressed with Patrick. Patrick yeah. with a very good control, nice. He's got a nice curveball, nice breaking ball. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be that pitch will be very, very effective against right-handed batter because it's a late break. Yep, very nice, very good. All right, we move on. We'll be back here again on top of the dugout next Monday evening when the Middletown Knights come to Catoctin High School for the second game of this young early baseball season. Uh, any final thoughts? It, it, it's just, you know, spring baseball. Just love to be out here, the crack of the bat, yeah. you know, watching these young men. It's really fun to watch Coach Franklin over the years in this program and these young men that shuffle in and out of the lineup, in and out of the program, and they just play fundamental baseball. It's a lot of fun to see. And it's a very productive baseball that they play, right. taking advantage of all the breaks and not letting anything slip by and making the most. They put eight runs up on the board. Congratulations, Katastin Cougars season home opener here, the baseball team and the softball team. Yep with wins here uh, adjacent fields. Uh, good way to start out the spring sports season. Okay, well, that's it. That's a wrap. We'll put this one in the books, and we will see you next Monday, 4.30 first pitch, Middletown right here at Catoctin on Cool Oldies 1450 T-H-U. Good night, all. Don't worry. If you can't make it to the game or miss the broadcast, all of our high school sports games are archived and available online at WTHUradio.com in our audio vault.